Hi, this is Jason Salemi. I'm an Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the University of South Florida College of Public Health. And today was an important day for those of you who subscribe to my channel know that I've put together a pretty comprehensive video talking about excess deaths and in particular in response to an American Journal of Public Health study. I mentioned in that video that I had submitted a formal letter to the editor of the journal and that article was published and made available today alongside something I had not seen, which was the original author's response to my critique. And so after reading it, I'm feeling a little bit maybe confused, maybe a little frustrated, and so hence the title, Is It Just Me or Do Some Details Matter? So I want to quickly revisit that AJPH Excess Deaths article. Again, I've already put together a video. Feel free to watch it. Uh, it's a little bit lengthy, but I go over some of my concerns about the original article. I won't revisit most of those, but I am going to touch on a few because they resurfaced. Uh, again, these are the two things that just came out on the American Journal of Public Health site today. On the left is my initial critique to the article. On the right is the original author's. I won't even say it's a response in many ways. They didn't respond to what my critiques were, but it is their um, opportunity to clarify some things, and some things they did clarify, others I felt they did not. So I do not want to lose focus of what's important by my nitpickiness on the nitty-gritty details. What is really important is all-cause excess deaths are an important metric to follow. People may not have only died after getting COVID-19, but certainly the ramifications of this pandemic have caused death from other reasons, avoiding healthcare. We've talked about this. You've heard about this in some of my other videos. So capturing the total toll of the pandemic is crucial, and that's both direct and indirect causes of death associated with the pandemic. And the good news is, I've got a little excerpt here from the author's response, and they say this, right? Hence, the mortality burden associated with COVID-19 is significantly higher than, would what be, than what would be predicted on the basis of pre-pandemic historical trends. So again, they're getting the interpretation of why all-cause excess deaths are important. They're getting that right. But of course, I wouldn't have put a video just to say, hey, everything looks good. I had already said that, so this is from the letter that I wrote, my critique. I'm acknowledging all-cause excess deaths are extremely useful in providing a comprehensive assessment of deaths, both directly and indirectly attributable to COVID-19. You know, I'm pointing out this is really important, but I had specific criticisms, and I feel like my criticisms have not been heard or addressed at all. So the two big things I was able to mention, you know, you have a word count, I could only mention so many things. My big thing was I felt like the authors were undercounting actual COVID-19 deaths that occurred in Florida. I felt like they were using the wrong data source. They were focusing on deaths based on when they were reported, not deaths based on when they occurred, and it's not a trivial difference. So their response, really, they don't directly quote my letter, but they just say this in the middle of their article. Also, we do not believe reporting lags substantively affected our analyses. And again, this was one of my primary criticisms is the problem with using deaths based on when they're reported and not when they occurred is because it takes a lot of time. Once a death occurs, it can take weeks, if not months, to actually have that death be reported. They just have this loose statement with no substantiation of why they don't believe reporting lags affected their analysis, which is odd because my letter says all of those things. You didn't use what I feel is the appropriate data set, and I even quantify that I think they underestimated deaths by almost 13%. 16,409 had actually occurred during their original study time frame. They only reported 14,000. And that's important because this underreporting, undercounting, these differences that they're calculating, all are dependent on getting that number right. And I even included in my letter a graphic that shows the lag in reporting. For those of you who uh, have, have frequented my COVID-19 dashboard, I have a visualization like this in color. For the letter, it's obviously just in black and white. But the point was the author's original study ended at the end of September. And I am demonstrating that a lot of deaths that were reported after their study time frame, right, 
had actually occurred during their study time frame, but the lag in reporting, you know, and the, you know, the fact that they were using deaths by when they were reported, they didn't include them in their study, which I felt like, it, you know, it was a major limitation. And this is not new, this lag in reporting. This is just another lava plot. This is actually all cause deaths in the entire United States. And just to illustrate how severe death reporting lag can be, just focus on this bottom point here. This was, so all of these are how many deaths occurred during the week that ended on January 9th, 2021. And if you would have used the initial report that came out from CDC, they would have estimated 57,000 deaths. But of course, as the weekly numbers continue to roll out, if you would have waited until the most recent report and allowed all of those lag deaths to be reported, look at how many deaths actually occurred on that actual week. 87,000, a difference of, you guessed it, 30,000. So reporting lag is a real and serious thing, and we all kind of know about it. So when I started to read the response, I noticed, hey, we're going to Although we don't believe lags affected our analysis, we're going to update our analysis, right? We're going to do the entire calendar year 2020. And I welcomed this because I'm like, okay, an opportunity to get it right. It's a longer study time frame. And of course, down at the bottom right, in my original critique, I even provided a reference to the appropriate data set to use, the Florida COVID-19 deaths based on the day they occurred, not the date they were reported. But what happened? So again, this is from their response. I'm not going to go into all of these numbers, but again, I have no problem. They can use their approach to estimating excess deaths. No problem there. But then they're, of course, subtracting the number of official COVID-19 deaths in Florida and coming up with this difference. But guess what they used? They used, because I was trying to reconcile this number, this 21,673 is coming from the CDC based on when the deaths were reported. If you actually would have gone to the appropriate data file and looked at how many deaths actually occurred in 2020 in Florida, the more accurate number, this number is significantly higher, 8% higher. And so what if we actually take this revised number and plug in the accurate numbers for COVID-19 deaths in Florida is this difference, right? The difference between all-cause excess deaths and COVID-19 deaths is no longer 5,500. It's 3,700. The exact same kind of issue that occurred in the original study, which I tried to point out in my letter, this is an almost 50% overestimation of the difference between excess deaths and COVID-19 deaths. And again, they said, we don't believe reporting lags substantively affected our analyses. I would argue that it does and continues to do. So again, I'm gonna circle back. What's really important in all of this is in the title of their response. Excess deaths reveal the substantial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on mortality. That is true. All cause excess deaths are important to track. But again, this study focused on Florida and context matters. So this is an interview I had done with a reporter, Stephanie Colombini from NPR here in, in Tampa on WUSF. And the IHME, another group that estimates a lot of models, had suggested that, oh my goodness, Florida is underreporting deaths, you know, according to their estimates, by 40%. But the context matters. If you just look at Florida in isolation, it's easy to make assumptions on what you're seeing. But Florida ranked 16th best, right? If you looked at the under-reporting that they were estimating by state, Florida was doing better. So it says down here, Florida still performs better than most states. And again, I'll circle back. Excess deaths reveal the substantial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in Florida. Well, what about all-cause excess deaths? This is the percent excess deaths that has transpired since the beginning of 2020. And this is not to point out, oh, Florida's doing better or worse, because in all honesty, as soon as you start to make state level comparisons on these numbers, you got to remember that states have different underlying population demographics. They have different urbanicity. They have different weather. They have different infrastructure for being able to handle this pandemic 
But my point is, almost every state was significantly impacted as demonstrated through all-cause excess deaths. So I would have still loved some additional context by running the same kind of analysis on another state and demonstrating that this difference between all-cause excess deaths and COVID-19 reported deaths or deaths that actually occurred due to COVID-19, that difference is there for every single state. And Florida is just no different in that regard. So I'm not opposed to running these kind of analyses and pointing these things out and demonstrating the importance of all-cause excess deaths. But I just feel like so much context gets lost. And to me, again, the, the, the sentiment doesn't change much, but getting the numbers right does make a difference. Because as we start to talk about what proportion of this pandemic is directly attributable to COVID-19, people who got the virus and died, versus you know indirect causes, other reasons that was not actually the virus. That difference is important. And I feel like this revised analysis, because they continue to use a data set that underestimates the COVID-19 deaths that actually occurred in Florida, it kind of gets that wrong. So I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, I know a lot of people were asking me when this was going to be published. So the letter to the editor was finally published. I read the response, and these are just kind of some of my sentiments. So um, if you're interested in it, um, you know, that's why I put this video together. Uh, have a wonderful night. I'll talk to you soon.